All right, guys. So I'm gonna attempt to take you through a little walking tour of the neighborhood. This is the Airbnb I'm staying at. So we'll take a little walk around the neighborhood and see what it's like. And I actually haven't done this yet. So it'll be a first time for me as well as for you. So this area is like across the street or across the Lions Bridge, I guess you could say, from the historic district in St. Augustine. So as soon as you cross the bridge, you got this little area over here, and that's where we're at. But this area seems pretty nice, and it's very quiet. You just hear birds chirping. There's really not much traffic in the area, and it's pretty peaceful if you ask me. But I can't believe how expensive these houses are here. I'm very surprised by that. I forgot to show you the house next door. But they're asking 550 grand. Probably asking even more for this house right here. I didn't see this one listed online actually. I've seen a few houses here where they have for sale signs in the yard, but they don't have them listed on the MLS. So I don't know what that's all about. They could be pending. They could be, um, you know, new listings. I don't know. But either way, it seems like the prices over here are getting insane. But I can see why everybody wants to live here. I mean, just see how, how this neighborhood looks and feels, right? I mean, look how quiet it is. It's not even really windy out. So I didn't even put the microphone on my iPhone and I wanted to use the gimbal to do this walk. So I'm just using the gimbal and the iPhone alone here with no microphone because there's like no wind. If it gets too windy, I'll switch over to the tripod and the microphone. So that way it's not annoying for you. But what, I, what I'm seeing around the neighborhood here is that there's probably a lot of houses that could potentially come for sale. But the problem is then the reason why people will probably be listing them is because the market's hot and they want to get a bunch of money for the house. Not because they actually need to sell for any particular reason. But this area is super convenient location wise. You know, being so close to the historic district and even if you just walk a few more blocks down this street, which I'll show you guys, there's like restaurants and bars and stores. So even though you live in a house, you could still walk to some places, which is pretty similar to how it is in Miami Beach and some of the neighborhoods we've walked through over there. There's a couple neighborhoods we've been through there where the houses are walking distance to some things. That house over there is for sale. But I really am enjoying the peace and quiet of being out here and imagining what it would be like to live here. And I don't blame everybody for wanting to come. So we'll like walk to the end of the street so you guys can see like what else is around here as far as like the businesses and stuff like that and then we'll walk back through the neighborhood up a couple different streets kind of just do like a big circle but you can see the houses here are nice looking they're not run down and beat up the neighborhood is very charming but I think the, the houses are becoming overvalued. And like I said in the driving video, it's just a simple supply and demand issue. Because when I was looking a couple of years ago, you could probably find at any given moment a good 20 houses or more for sale right in this little area that we're walking through. Now there's three. So that gives you an idea of just how tight the inventory is 
And when it's that tight, you know, that brings on a lot of competition. I'm not sure how many people are moving here or actually just buying for investment, but either way, it eats up the available inventory. And if they're asking 550 for that little house, I can't imagine what they're asking for bigger houses like this. There's also a little park over here, so let's go check this out. It's kind of neat. Let's see what this is all about. It's called Oglethorpe Battery Park. That'd be me if I lived here riding on the lawnmower, cutting the grass until I get tired of it. Check it out. Named after a military officer. They got some cannons here. I'm sure it says why on some of these monuments, but they're hanging a British flag up there instead of an American flag. This obelisk here but you see it's nice that this is like right in the neighborhood right it's a nice little place to come and walk your dog or play with your kids whatever it's nice that it's here looks like they have a piece of the fort for something like that over here lots of shade lots of big mature trees for a hot day It's almost getting to sunset. It's about, oh, it's about 7.15 or so right now. Sunset's at eight o'clock. So this is like the golden hour. This is actually one of the most beautiful times to shoot video outdoors. So this is great timing, I think. Got some Bougainvillea over there. Check it out. It's like a piece of the fort. Something like that. I don't know if this was here. They put it here on purpose just for the park. Either way, it's cool and it's very old. You can see it's made out of that coquina. Pretty cool. This house looks totally brand new. That's one thing I'm noticing over here, actually. There's actually more lots, you know, empty plots of land for sale in this area right now then there is um, houses for sale so that's kind of weird All these houses over here appear to be new. So I'm guessing that a lot of these people bought some of these empty plots of land and built a new house here. But the strange thing is, it's like, just to give you an idea of how out of control the market's getting here right now, the plots of land here, they're asking north of $300,000, $350,000 just for the land. and. That's pretty much what houses were selling for here just a couple years ago. You buy the whole house with the land. So that's pretty insane. So I don't know how much longer that's really going to last. But we'll find out. I'm curious to see what's going to happen. It's the fate of the St. Augustine real estate market. But you see, you really have all different kinds of houses here. There's like a smaller house here. You got a two-story house right next to it. You know, new construction behind us back there. Probably a couple of these other houses built 
over a hundred years ago. It's like a mix of all different kinds of things. That's a nice little bench they have there in the front yard. And my feeling is, I don't know this for sure, but I think the reason why there's not a lot of houses for sale is probably because people really enjoy living here. You know, and if you're an investor and you're renting out your house, you know, you're getting cash flow, you don't really want to sell unless you're, you know, can make a big profit and you bought it for cheap. Now would be a good time to sell for someone like that. just one more block away and you're already at some restaurants and stores and things like that so we've been walking for 11 and a half minutes so basically a 12 minute walk from the house and you can be going out to dinner somewhere in the neighborhood that's not too bad How beautiful it is. So I'll jump on this sidewalk over here. So right up here on the corner is a hotel. You got the Anastasia Inn, I believe it's called. And then right here to the left, you got Osprey Tacos. Haven't been here yet. It actually looks pretty good. I wish I had time to visit, but there's still a lot to see and do here in St. Augustine that I have not done. Next time I come here, I plan on staying for like a whole week probably, and I'll just stay here. I'm not gonna go anywhere else. But this time on this trip around Florida, I really wanted to get to a good handful of different places. You can see there's like a bar over there. You know, you got a hotel here. There's more restaurants and stuff like that down the way. There's a dentist. There's all kinds of things walking distance to the house. So that's pretty cool. But to be totally honest, you probably, there's Lizzie. Hi guys. <laughs> She's following me. She doesn't like to be in the video. But anyways, even though a lot of this stuff is walking distance, I can tell most people just drive everywhere. And I guess you kind of get in that habit, right? When you live at a house, you drive everywhere. And unless something's like right across the street, it's kind of hard to get in the habit of walking unless you make a point of it. That's a nice old Bronco. You don't see those every day. But I have to say, I'm a little bit sad and disappointed that things have gotten out of control price-wise here. But it's okay, because there's still so many places I haven't seen yet in Florida. And I'm curious to see if there's going to be anywhere else that I like better than here, which maybe there is. One place I really got my eye on, which I'm going to talk about in more of the videos coming up, is uh, Port Orange. Florida somewhere that wasn't on my radar but actually ended up staying the night there and seems like a pretty nice area even the beach area is pretty cool and houses there are still affordable and it's a very up-and-coming area it's still growing quite a bit and could be more desirable than this area pretty soon I think Oh, 
Aldo. Maybe I should stop talking about the nicest places to live, right? Because every time I say where's a good place to live, it goes sky high. They should be giving me some credit for some of the value of the houses here, right? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea how many people have seen any of my videos that ended up actually moving here, but I would imagine a good chunk of them have. Get some an apartment complex over here. Right next to the houses in the main street. Jeez. Those birds are angry. Hopefully they're not gonna attack me like the birds in Miami Beach. I don't know if you guys have seen that on the news, but there's like these uh, birds over there that are attacking people in Miami Beach. Look at this house over here. They have like this walk-up area. I thought it was like a a slide or something, like a water slide. This, this house looks like three or four stories tall. I don't know if you guys can see that up there. Looks like they got a hot tub up there or something. All the way up there. Interesting. This is a nice looking little house. This house reminds me of a lot of the houses I saw walking through the Hollywood Hills. Man, I can't wait to go back there, guys, and do some walking tours over there. There's so many cool little neighborhoods and houses to walk through over there. Every time I'm there, I love just walking through the neighborhood. But yeah, the, the condition of these houses, it seems like pretty hit or miss. Like, I feel like in most of the neighborhoods in Miami Beach, where they have single family homes like this, most of them are pretty well maintained. They have a few outliers here and there where it's like, you know, those guys don't take care of the house. But here, it seems like there's quite a few of them that really need some improvement. That's why, I don't think that whatever they're asking for a lot of these houses is actually worth it because a lot of these houses to me are fixer-uppers or complete renovations. So I know I wouldn't be paying no half a million bucks for some fixer-upper over here. But and that house's defense, it's 550 grand and it's completely remodeled so you don't have to fix it up. But I saw that they have a garage in the back, which I would be interested in turning into the Airbnb unit. And it's not a garage right now, or it's not an Airbnb right now. It's a garage. So you still have to do renovations and stuff like that. So you're spending 550 grand on the house and maybe another 30 or 40 to turn the garage into a little apartment. So. You're looking at almost 600,000 all in. And to me, that's not really worth it. You know, that'd be bringing your monthly payment to close to three grand a month. And at best, maybe you could rent that little place in the back for maybe 12, 1300 a month. Maybe a little more with Airbnb. So, yeah, I don't know. That's an interesting looking house. You see, you got like this kind of strange looking old house and right across the street are like two brand new houses. So the neighborhood's kind of all over the place when it comes to that. Which I also think makes it pretty hard to put a sticker price on any of these houses because 
when you're a real estate agent, you have to look at the comparables to see what else is selling in the neighborhood. And square footage is a good place to start, but square footage only brings you so far because, you know, it doesn't really matter how big the house is if it's trashed and it needs to be completely renovated or if it's only got one bathroom or, you know, whatever. And a lot of these houses seem to be made out of different materials. Like this little house you can tell is probably one of the older houses over here because it's very small, made probably mostly out of wood. And then the house right across the street is made out of brick. So how do you evaluate that, right? How do you put a price tag on something that's so different? And then the house right next door to that is a new, newer construction two-story house. <laughs> So it's like, yeah, you can say my neighbor across the street sold their house for X amount of dollars, but if your house is like a piece of crap compared to that house, it doesn't really matter. I think now would probably be a pretty good time to be in real estate here in St. Augustine. You could uh, potentially make a lot of money as a real estate agent, but don't worry, I'm not gonna be doing that. I enjoy making these videos much more. I already know what that grind is all about. And even though the houses are easy to sell in a hot market like this, guess what? There's a lot more competition. So if you're working with a buyer, you're gonna be submitting a lot of offers probably before you get one nailed down and you really want to be the listing agent anytime but particularly in times like this because then your job is pretty easy you list the house for sale another realtor brings the buyer a few days later you got it all locked up and now we're kind of coming back the way we came a little bit but I'll go down this other street here so we can see something different on the way back See, they got a family over there playing in the park now, utilizing it. I'm sure a lot of the locals here are probably pretty shocked by how much houses are costing here right now. And I haven't even looked into the cost of rentals yet either because I'm not looking to rent over here. But I would be curious to know, now that I'm thinking about it, how much they're charging for rentals now. That's pretty cool. Got like a little party area set up in the backyard here. What's that, babe? Probably. Probably looking to buy a house here. Yeah. <laughs> like everybody else in town. I wanted to get you guys a walking tour of like the downtown historic district too, but only being here two days in town, the driving tour was the best I could do because, you know, I'm walking right now through the neighborhood that we're in. And then after this, I need some time to actually start working on figuring out my storage situation for all of the footage I've been taking so far, because I have a ton of it. And I kind of want to release a couple more of these videos while I'm out on the road, even though I wasn't planning on doing that. But it's kind of cool to keep you guys posted in real time. We also have to figure out where we're going to stay. Yeah, that's the other thing. So far, I don't have a home yet for tomorrow night. Homeless. So, got to get that figured out. Tomorrow's going to come fast. Tonight, you're going to be on something. Yep, tonight. We're grilling out in the backyard, taking full advantage of 
being at the Airbnb. It's only been four days and I'm sick of restaurant food. That's kind of how I am. You know, anybody that doesn't really know me, I'm not into eating out a lot. Like, look at this. It's like a castle over here. How strange is that? Talk about having all different types of houses in the neighborhood, huh? I thought this was a white castle for a moment, you know? The, re the restaurant? <laughs> Looks like it's a house or something like that. Not really sure what it's supposed to be. Interesting. Good luck putting the value on that one. I'm sure the realtor will say it's worth more because it's a castle. I like more little simple traditional style houses like this. One story, it's got a two car garage, nice size yard. That's more what I would be looking for over here. That's kind of why I like the house that we're staying in. It's a little small for a house, but it is a two bedroom, two bathroom, so it's doable. And just the fact that it has the cottage in the back for Airbnb is a winning combination for me. It's like already set up for that scenario, which is what I want to do. This is so weird, right? Look at this place. Lizzie's walking over there, so I guess I'm going to follow her for a minute. She's always trying to get us into trouble. Yesterday she was walking in a place where it shows no trespassing. And she was going in anyhow. It looks like this place is abandoned. Maybe that's why they say St. Augustine's haunted. Maybe all these weird haunted properties here. <laughs> Look at that, man. Looks like they have a whole separate little guest house here. And then this is the main castle. Crazy, huh? Wasn't expecting to see that. Are you going in? Yeah, I think it's open actually. Uh-oh. See what I mean? She's always trying to get us into trouble. She better really be careful because she she uh, thinks ghosts are real, so. A castle with a modern door. <laughs> wow. Well, this walking tour took an unexpected turn, now didn't it? Let's see if we can look inside the window. Oh, well, look at that. The place is completely gutted. There's nothing inside. How weird is that, huh? I don't even know what to say right now. It's just like the Duville by us. Yep. Yeah. Oh, better watch out. There's a glass. Well, this went from a walking tour to a ghost tour. This place has been abandoned for a while because we got vegetation growing over here. It looks like everything's gutted inside. That's kind of weird. Somebody probably bought this and probably started renovating it or thinking they had the money to renovate this place and probably ran out of money and went into foreclosure. That's my guess, my real estate agent educated guess. <laughs> Got some kind of hatch over there, <laughs> escape hatch maybe from the dungeon. Wow. Weird, huh? Oh yeah, over there you can kind of see the main downtown area. Sort of. Not anymore. 
But that just goes to show you how close we are to it. Thanks for stopping by. See ya. <laughs> now we're gonna be haunted in our sleep. <laughs> Ooh, watch your step. Looks like somebody's having a party. A ton of cars parked over here. I think those kids were playing around in there. You know, this property looks huge. But actually, I don't know how big it really is because it looked pretty small inside whenever I was peeping through the window. Wow, this the smell of the flowers out here, whatever that is, it's so strong. I mean, I, I wish you could have smell come through the video sometimes because it just smells so nice out here. Yeah, straight ahead, you see guys? Way up there is the historic district, so that's how close we are here. It's, it's walking distance to here, you can definitely walk. But we haven't walked over there just because we're trying to save time, since our time is so limited. The other thing that's kind of weird about over here is there's like some spots that have sidewalks and some spots that don't have it. Not sure what that's all about either. These are pretty. Look at those. I love when we run into this kind of stuff on the walking tours and sharing it with you guys. Florida is a beautiful place. See, I would, I would love to get a place like this that has the garage like that and turn it into an apartment. But then I would need a garage still for myself, so I would probably have to build another either addition to the property or, I don't know. Some of these places are lucky enough to have a garage and an apartment in the back, but that's a pretty lucky find. Most of the time you're gonna have to build that yourself. But I definitely would want to do some type of house hacking if I bought a house around here. It would take a lot of burden off of us, you know, financially. You don't have to really worry about making the house payment because pretty much your Airbnb rental is going to be paying for most of it. And that's a really smart way for anybody to get into real estate. And the only reason I haven't done it myself is because for a long time I was pretty broke and now that I actually have some cash I'm thinking about leaving Miami and Miami is pretty expensive and the restrictions in Miami Beach to do Airbnb are pretty tough I see that I'm kind of pointing over there I walk over there so it's kind of hard to do this kind of thing in Miami Beach you know with the Airbnb and renting out a guest house and stuff like that because the fines are pretty steep. I think we got more bougainvillea here. This has to be one of the prettiest ones I've ever seen. Look how deep purplish red those colors are. Wow. I spotted that from across the street. It's very pretty. Now, the trick is going to be to see if I can get back to the house by myself without checking the map. I'm trying to look down the street and see kind of where we're at. Um, 
I say let's go left and it'll probably go a circle around this area. And then we'll be back to the house, I hope. Because now it's dinner time. Time to fire up that grill. Cook some steaks, drink some wine, review my footage, start working on the next video for you guys. I don't know if I'll publish this one next or the driving tour next. I shot a vlog earlier. I got so much content coming for you, it's not even funny. I'll bet you from this trip, I'm gonna have footage probably for like the next four or five months worth of videos. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice. Yeah, it's taking over. Interesting. Look at this one. This one's got like a historical sign in the front. This looks a lot like a lot of the um, Art Deco places you see in Miami Beach. This actually looks like a lot of these apartments and houses you see in Miami Beach. One of 11 original Mediterranean revival buildings. See what I mean? St. Augustine has the history. I was right, that's our road up there. I know. <laughs> well, I would never leave you here, so that's not gonna have to worry about that. It's a nice little house. I like that tree they have in the front yard. I wish I knew the names of all this stuff, guys, but sometimes you tell me and only now I remember the name of the Bougainvillea after I don't know how many videos. So it takes me a little while to remember. Oh yeah. Cool. Looks like they have a nice waterfront property over here. Oh yeah, that just reminds me. Speaking of trespassing, there's an empty lot right up here. When you take a turn to go back to the house and it has a beautiful view of the fort right from there. It's a waterfront property. You'll see it as we pass him by. I'm probably not gonna walk through there because I got my sandals on, probably a ton of bugs and sharp things to step on. Yeah. It is huge. We got cars coming on both sides. And no sidewalks. That's why we need sidewalks, guys. Look at that. Let me zoom in for you guys so you can see. We got the sunset over there. And we got the fort right across the waterway there. How pretty, huh? Whoever buys this lot and builds a house there has a million dollar view. It is pretty, isn't it? We got some beautiful pictures last night on Lizzie's birthday. That was another reason we took this trip too, because we like to travel on our birthdays if we can and get away from Miami and spend some time with each other where we're not working. Although on this trip, I'm working quite a bit. But our birthdays are like a week apart, so it's nice that we kind of get to celebrate that together every year and do something fun and special for each other. But I think we had a pretty good birthday yesterday, huh? I love it. We went to 
driving on the beach, Daytona Beach in the morning. First time driving on the beach, baby. And by the evening, we were into St. Augustine here, checked into the house. And then what did we do? Oh. We, we went to Harry's for dinner. Before. Oh yeah, we went to the sunset. We went to go see the sunset, which is um, not over here. We went somewhere else, but. Over the bridge, right? Yeah. You don't even remember what we did yesterday? I know, I'm getting old. Okay. <laughs> there you have the sunset was pretty, and then afterwards we went to Harry's. Yeah, Harry's is like the famous restaurant over there in the historic district in St. Augustine. Everybody goes there, and we were there a couple of years ago, and we really liked it, so. Lizzie wanted to go there for her birthday, but man, it was packed. We almost ended up at a diner. <laughs> yeah. Because it was too crazy at first. The Village Inn, let me tell you, yeah. good alternative, man. It's a, just a diner, nothing fancy, but the prices yeah. are good and the food is excellent. Mm -hmm. the breakfast, especially the breakfast. Yes, I would recommend the Village Inn all day long. <laughs> it looks like they already got people coming to check out the house for yeah. sale next door. You guys can see this. I know. It's that's how hot the market is here, guys. Maybe they're moving out already. Could be. So yeah, we're staying at this house right here, this one, and the one that just came up on the market for sale is the one next door. That's the one they're asking 550 grand for. Well, guys, that concludes our walking tour for St. Augustine Beach. Hope you enjoyed it. Check out my next walking tour on the screen. And I'll see you guys over there in the next one.